Hi everybody, this is Elena from the Immigration People and welcome back to our another episode of Successful PR Stories. Today, we had the pleasure of inviting Carlo, who had recently gotten his Singapore PR with his family, to share his journey getting his PR with all of you here. Carlo, would you like to say hi to our viewers and share with them a little bit more about your background and what you do? Yes, uh, so I'm Carlo and I've been here in Singapore for about 15 years now, together with my family. So my wife is here and I have two kids, uh, my 15-year-old son and a 17-year-old daughter. And I work in the tech finance industry. Uh, yeah. That's great to know, Carlo. So let's talk your memories a little. Like, when did you first come to Singapore? How did you get to Singapore in the first place? So we actually moved to Singapore about like 15 years ago, back in 2008. Um, yeah, so that was a long time ago. And then uh, prior to that, we always have holidays here in Singapore because we do have some relatives who mm. live here. And then uh, when we had kids, uh, we realized that this is a good place to actually raise a family. First of all, it's pretty safe. Uh, and second, education, because Singapore does provide one of the best educations here in Asia. So we actually decided to move here. And the other is like job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of good job opportunities here, especially for my industry. So, yeah, so I moved here. We moved here back in 2008. Wow, so 15 years ago, you already see the opportunity here in Singapore for you and your family. Yep. It's good to always plan ahead, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, what actually gave you the opportunity to move to Singapore? Like, did you look for a job here or your company actually relocated you here? There's an opening. No, actually back mm. in 2008, the Singapore government offers this pass. It's called EPEC. Mm, uh, yes. It actually provides you the opportunity to look for a job. They'll give you a pass for about a year and you can stay in Singapore. So luckily I was able to get that pass. So I stayed here. Then after about two months or three months, I was able to find a job. Then after getting that, like after six months, my family moved in with me here. That's great, yep. fantastic. Yep. And I understand your children are actually studying in local schools. That is correct. So luckily we were able to get a government school. Uh, mm. So they started when they were in primary one. Um, yeah, and it was like a blessing for us because I know how difficult it is to actually go into a government school, especially if you're not a PR or if you're not Singaporean. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Because for our public school system, uh, the government actually prioritizes citizens followed by PR and then subsequently foreigners. Mm -hmm. And they actually try to maintain the quota mm -hmm. yeah, to make sure that there's a good ratio to balance out the different ethnicities or so. Yeah, so um, Carla, what makes you actually want to apply for PR? Like how long, how many years into Singapore that you decided, oh, it's time for me to convert my status from a work pass to a PR? So we've actually realized it like uh, back in 2011. So when my kids were actually trying to get into a local school, mm. it was difficult for us because we were actually foreigners. So we need to actually go around town and look for a school that will accept my kids. And that's the time that we realized, hey, we should apply for PR because we might be staying here for long term. And so we did. I think that was back in 2011. So the mistake that we made is back in 2011, they became more strict in terms mm. of like providing PR. Yeah. We should have applied earlier because back in 2008, <laughs> it was easier. Mm. So Carlo, I understand that you have actually applied PR twice on your own before. And do you remember what were the challenges faced by, you know, you trying to apply back then? So uh, there were a lot of challenges. Initially, the form itself was a challenge. <laughs> like, first, we don't actually know if we were answering all of the forms correctly. Um, and the second one are documents. Like, uh, we need to provide documents and not just our documents, but supporting documents as well. So I remember when we were applying, there was a lot of back and forth between ICA and us because sometimes we would go there and the document is incomplete, then we need mm. to like get that document after a week. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty taxing. There was like a lot of effort and then it's time consuming as well for us. Mm -hmm. And what actually make you want to try out getting professional help in your third try? Were you, you know, do you do Google search by yourself or were you recommended by friends? No, so actually uh, my wife told me like uh, she has a colleague who actually got the, the, her PR approved mm -hmm. and she actually used uh, the immigration people for it. So uh, we decided to go for it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because yeah, we really want to become PR. First, the kids are uh, growing old and they'll be in the university soon and we want them to continue their education here. Uh, so, and then the other one is like the economic climate. Right now, we're really unsure about like job security. Mm. So we just decided let, let's go for it and see how it goes. The power of word of mouth recommendation, the most powerful marketing tool here. That's true. Yeah, so Carlo, what do you feel is the biggest difference between doing the application yourself versus receiving professional help? Because this is actually a very common question we receive from clients. They're mm -hmm. like, hey, I can do the application on my own. So why do I need to engage you know, a third party to do it for me? What's the value add here? So maybe you would like to share with our viewers um, you know, as a consumer, what did, how did you feel? It was really helpful uh, because first of all, like we know it gives us this, you know, confidence that we're answering all of the forms correctly because previously we don't have any guidelines, we don't have any reference at all whether the forms are actually correct or not and like we've also had some back and forth <laughs> because we've actually submitted the forms to you and saying, oh Carlo, this isn't correct, you should correct this which was really helpful for us and the other thing is you actually provided us a list of the documents that we need mm -hmm. and not just the main documents that was as a requirement but other supporting documents you know that can strengthen our application and that was really really helpful so carlo i understand that it's about 11 months of wait for your most recent application so what was your reaction when you first found out that hey you know our application got approved so actually it, it's a long time like during the first few months I was actually checking my phone whether our PR got approved almost every day <laughs> then as time goes by like I mm -hmm. only check it like every two days or like once a week and then uh, yeah it was just last January mm -hmm. when I opened up my phone and then I realized that we got approved I actually double checked because I just woke up <laughs> so I thought I was dreaming so I checked my phone again and told my wife hey uh, we got approved in our PR to be honest, we weren't like expecting anything because we got rejected twice mm -hmm. as well. And uh, I know how difficult it is to get the PR. So we were really, really jubilant. We were really happy that we actually got approved. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, really happy for you and your family as well when you first, you know, share with me the news. I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. because I know it's a long wait. We've been waiting quite a while for your status. And then, you know, one day I just received the text and say it's been approved. So congratulations. Thank you very much. I think it's going to make a big difference to, you know, your children's education as mm -hmm. well, because now they can update the school that their status is converted yep. to PR. And then moving forward, what will your plans be, you know, now that you're PR? So first of all, the most excited is my son because he really wanted to serve NS, <laughs> which is, I know it's a bit weird, like yeah. not a lot of a like... a touchy yeah. topic. <laughs> yeah, so he wanted to serve NS and then uh, also for my daughter because she'll be studying in the uni soon mm. and we wanted her to continue her higher education here in Singapore. So that's also good. And for us, as I said, for me and my wife as well, it gives us a sense of security. You know, mm -hmm. uh, since what's happening now with the economy, there's a lot of job cuts and all that. At least we know that we're secure. Even if something happens to one of us in terms of jobs, then at least we can still stay here in, the Sing in Singapore together with the kids. Yeah, definitely. I think having a PR status definitely gives you the much needed stability yep. when it comes to employment and also making future plans. It can be a little more concrete now mm -hmm. and um, yeah, understanding how you can sink your roots here. And mm. the other good thing is like um, in the future, if uh, my kids wanted a path to citizenship, at least this is like a, a step for them Yes, because exactly. they lived here their whole lives. Uh, like they're more used to the Singapore culture than the Filipino <laughs> culture. So I think if they wanted to continue and become Singaporeans in the future, this is a good step for them. Exactly, because the only way to become a citizen is to be a PR for at least two years. Yep. So I think that definitely opens up the pathway to becoming a Singapore citizen mm -hmm. in the future. So thank you, Carlo, for taking the time to actually share your story and your journey with our viewers. So our viewers may also be your fellow, you know, Filipino country mates who's, you know, in Singapore with their family, thinking of applying for PR, or maybe back in the Philippines wanting to come advance their career in Singapore. So what 
would your piece of advice to them be? Um, so my advice would be is just keep on trying. Um, there's no harm in trying and you won't know if you're going to get approved or not. And uh, another advice would be is in terms of your career, uh, try to improve uh, all the time um, because that helps uh, in terms of career development. Um, and the other thing is, uh, it's not just becoming PR, but trying to assimilate yourself uh, with the community. Uh, try to do charity work as well because we've done that, me and my wife and the kids, we've done some charity works. And uh, the other thing would be is like if uh, you're unsure and if you're having problems and you don't know how to apply for PR, you can actually hire an agency like the immigration people because they actually help us a lot uh, in getting our PR approved and we really appreciate it that for all the help that you've done to us. Thank you so much, Carlo. And it's also a pleasure working with you guys. You guys have been so cooperative to ensure that the entire process is so smooth and easy for us to work on your documents and prepare your entire profile to present to the immigration authorities. I think it's such a fabulous piece of advice and such a good wrap up to today's sharing. And Carlo, I believe your story will continue to inspire your community to keep trying for their PR application. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here and thanks for inviting me. And thank you for all the help that you provided. And uh, not just for me, but for my whole family as well. It's really a life changer for us. You're most welcome. And I believe Carlo's story actually proves that anything is possible with the right kind of help. If you have enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and also share it with your friends. Oh, by the way, we are close to hitting 2200 subscribers. A huge shout out to our subscribers and even non-subscribers for watching, liking and sharing our videos. Your support means a lot to us and we hope to be able to continue producing more good content on Singapore immigration topics. Yeah, just a shout out to my friends Rachel and Chris. Hi. <laughs> and that's all for today's episode. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.